Now, a hormone that we've been chatting about over the last while is testosterone and its impact on overall health. So today we're going to be zooming in on how it affects the brain's function. And joining me, of course, in studio is Dr. Mark Opperman from the T-Clinic. Welcome, Mark. Good to have you back with us. Michael, it's always good to be here. Now, Mark, we did a really good roundabout discussion around testosterone um, the last time that you were here. But now, we, as I mentioned, we're going to dive into the brain function aspect. Tell us about uh, the impact of testosterone and the role of testosterone in brain function. Michael, you're right. Every time that we've been here, I said the biggest effect of testosterone is on the brain. Mm. Now, it's very interesting if we look at where testosterone comes from. The signal to make testosterone actually comes from the brain, where the brain tells the part of the brain um, that connects our endocrine system, our hormone system, with our nervous system. Right. And that then stimulates um, a different center in the brain to produce hormones, which are uh, chemical messengers, to stimulate our testicles and our ovaries to produce testosterone right. so that it can have an effect on brain function. So it's quite a loop there because it's coming Absolutely. from the brain down to the bottom and then back up to do the action. Absolutely. Yeah. So testosterone not only affects the development of the brain, mm -hmm. but it affects the structure of the brain, the function of the brain, as well as the immune system of the brain. Okay. So um, I think if we look at brain function and especially mental well-being or mental mm. health, there's a few things that we think of. Now, the first one is cognition. Yes. Um, learning ability. That's probably the first thing, like the biggest thing that we'd be concerned about. Absolutely. Yeah. But then we have the things that are so prevalent and predominant in society today, depression and anxiety. Mm. And all of this has to do with neurotransmitters, as we call them. Now, there's more than a hundred of them that's been uh, identified. Um, the neurotransmitters are chemical messengers. And it, it allows certain parts of the brain and the neurons, the actual tissue that makes up the brain, to communicate with each other, to communicate with different parts of the body, organs, and to communicate with glands. Okay. So the biggest one that, or one of the biggest, is dopamine. So yes. we all know dopamine. And Dopamine is a hormone that we associate with, um, it gets released when something good happens. Yeah, that feel, they call it the feel-good hormone. The feel-good hormone. Good hormone. Yes, yes. And it is exactly that. Mm. But dopamine plays such a pervasive role and such an incredibly important role in the functioning of the brain where it facilitates the communication of individual neurons, nerves, with each other. Okay and then with um, organs, heart, kidneys, and then with glands, like your pituitary gland, right. like your adrenal gland, mm. to release other hormones that has an effect on the brain. So it seems so complex, but at the same time, it's, it's fairly simple. It's just all so integral. Uh, I, I'm smiling because <laughs> it sounds simple. It's incredibly intricate mm. because the moment you you adjust one hormone, it has an effect not only on the, that hormone and where it's supposed to have an effect, mm -hmm. but on all the other hormones because all of them in somehow or another are related to one another. Yes. So we, we need to make the distinction between hormones and neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are chemical messengers. And we, we widely class them in three categories. One that excites, and that means that it's going to activate um, cells or tissue to have a certain effect. Right. One that inhibits, and when we have an inhibitory effect, you know, that's usually what relaxes us. Mm -hmm. And then there's a modulatory effect where it literally changes things, and that's where glands come in. Okay. So if we look at testosterone, for instance, the brain itself stimulates the part of the brain, the hypothalamus, to connect the 
hormone side and the neuro neurological side, right. the, the, uh, the brain and the spinal cord with one another. And that part then stimulates the part of the brain that's responsible for glands and modulation of glands and production of hormones, the pituitary gland. And that then has an effect on your end organs like your ovaries and your testicles. Right, right. So there's so much of this that's going on. Adjusting one of them without knowing what it's going to do on something else mm -hmm. will have serious repercussions. So let's go back to mental health or mental well-being. Cognition. If we look at what dopamine does, dopamine facilitates the communication between individual nerves. For pathways in the brain to form, you have to have communication between these nerves and it's like walking through a felt. Yes. If you walk once, you know, but there's a very, very faint uh, track you that you can that follow. Just see that But the yeah. more you walk, the more clear this path becomes. And that's the pathways that we form in the brain. Right. And dopamine is involved in that. But dopamine is testosterone dependent. Testosterone increases right. dopamine, dopamine levels. So that would then cause an increase in the ability to form these pathways. Form these pathways. Right. Now, these pathways can be good or bad. Yes, yes. So let's think about cognition. As we get older, one of the biggest things that we start getting is that we start forgetting things. Mm, mm. And that's because the pathways in the brain are not connecting um, that well anymore. Okay. Taking short-term memories and turning them into long-term memories uh, requires pathways. Yes. But good communication between um, dopamine and your, your nerves. If we think of diseases like Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. Parkinson's disease where we have decrease in dopamine levels. Okay, okay. So movement, normal movement, how to walk, uh, coordination is, is dependent on the communication between nerves, dopamine, yes. feel good hormone, and testosterone. Um, testosterone increases dopamine levels. Right. If we think about anxiety, depression, we go to another neurotransmitter, serotonin. Yes. We yes. all have heard about serotonin. So um, testosterone elevates serotonin levels. When there's a decrease as we grow older in testosterone production in both men and women, the effect that it has on modulating mm. and repairing the brain through its effect on neurotransmitters, chemical messengers, that is where we start seeing dysfunction, decreased function, disease, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, right. um, fatigue, weight gain, um, addiction. So Very interesting. The, it, it's the role that, that our sex hormones play in neurophysiology mm. through other hormones and chemicals are something that is mind-blowing. Yeah. What would cause the, the deterioration or the lower levels of testosterone um, in a person that would then cause this knock-on effect? So, you know what, to naturally keep our hormone levels stable, it's people who become obese, mm -hmm. people that gain weight. Um, sugar, uh, sugar is a, a toxin. It's a killer, yeah. Um, and you know what, it has an effect on gut health, which is connected to the brain, right. which will have an effect on brain function. Um, inactivity, mm -hmm. couch potatoes, you know, it, there's a reason why um, people that go for a run or go for a workout say oh, they feel so good after the workout Absolutely. because one of the excitatory um, chemicals in the brain is an endorphin mm. and an endorphin is part of dopamine, oxytocin and serotonin. Right. So all the right things we need all to the right generate things. those so pathways. Um, what, what causes decline? Natural aging process right, yes. where we don't repair tissue. Um, diet, activity, interaction with people, okay. music. Yes. Listening to music elevates dopamine levels. Dopamine is a reward motivational response. Um, it gets 
released and increases when we do something that feels good. Now, unfortunately, this is good and bad. So with people with addiction, mm. I have a drink and it makes me feel better. And that is a reward motivation um, response. So I want to do it again. Yes. Um, cognition, uh, where, where dopamine it increases learning ability. Sport, where, you know what, um, I've done well in this, I want to do it again, yes. I want to do it again. So, reward, you know, it's, it's the reward-based yeah. system. Right. Now, Mark, obviously changing lifestyle can have an impact on testosterone, but there are also testosterone therapies, which you offer at the T-Clinic. Do you want to tell us a little bit about those? So, at the T-Clinic, we're, we're a specialist clinic, and we focus not so much on testosterone supplementation. It's what I like to, to call it more is hormone balancing. Okay. I, I, I compare it to driving uh, a Formula One race car. The body is the race car. My patient is the driver and I'm the technical support team. Okay, the okay. driver drives the car and through the feedback that he gives us, either biochemically with um, his bloods or with literal verbal communication. Okay. Um, I'm going around this corner, there's a little bit of a skid here, um, there's not enough power here. That is how we adjust hormones and we don't only use testosterone we use things like vitamin d iron okay. um, dr paolo has discussed um, the, the role of iron in the immune system yes. but yeah all these things at the tea cleaning as a specialist clinic we look at all these things together and how they interact um, to create um, disturbances or um, diseases in the body right, right. and by trying to bring back balance um, to the hormone systems and create communication um, between the nervous system and the endocrine system, mm -hmm. we, we give our patients the best possible outcome. Okay. Well, Mark, it sounds like a wonderful process and I'm sure one that people would like to explore some more. So how can they get hold of you if they're interested? The easiest way is to get us through our website, um, theteaclinic.com, or uh, our branch in Johannesburg is 10 824-1393. Oh, fantastic. Mark, as always, a very interesting discussion. This just topic just gets bigger and bigger and more exciting as we progress. It's mind-blowing. Thanks, Thanks for Mike. sharing it.